Okay, YouTube. <clears throat> Slight change of venues here. I hope, hope I'm in the frame and everything. I'll have to check this. Uh, I'm out in the shed. It's not a wood shed, but it's a shed. This is uh, where I do a lot of my um, sort of um, mechanical work on these mics and that kind of stuff. Uh, so what I'm here out here to do is to show you how to mill some holes in a in a mic um, shell. In this case, it's kind of a kind of a large salt shaker. See the S on the front there. Uh, it's a little bit larger than I normally use for a mic shell, but I, I kind of have a special experimental purpose for this particular one. I, I kind of need something that big. Uh, so since I was going to mill it anyway, I'll just show you how I do it. And the first thing I would recommend to do, well, you need a drill. This is uh, just a standard, I use a corded drill. You can probably use a cordless one, probably had enough torque. You could use standard twist drill bits, and I used to do that in the past, although I was sort of unpleased with the result because they're sort of uneven, not perfectly circular, and they're kind of hard to control. So I recommend that you go out and you get a drill bit that's like this. This is a step drill bit, so otherwise sometimes called a unibit or a multibit, something like that. I went down to the local Harbor Freight, and I got a pack of three of them for like 10 bucks on sale. If you don't have a Harbor Freight, you go to your local auto parts store and you can get one like this. This one probably costs seven bucks or something like that at the All Pro or whatever it was. And you can see their step. They have a little, little numbers there to tell you uh, what the diameter of each step is. It makes it really easy to drill holes in sheet metal because that's what they're made for. So, so I use one of these. Uh, I usually drill two holes in a mic, uh, in a mic shell. One will be for the quarter inch jack. Uh, quarter inch jack the interior diameter. I mean that's the, the size of the plug is quarter inch diameter. So the jack itself is 5 8 inch. You need to make a 5 8 inch hole. Uh, and then for a potentiometer for a volume control. And now those things differ depending on how wide the shaft is. The particular one I'm going to use the actual diameter of the hole I need to drill is a quarter inch because the shaft and the bushing and stuff uh, all together only equals a quarter inch. So uh, how to start? Well, you need to give yourself some sort of traction for the drill bit, otherwise it's going to wander all over the place. You're going to end up with all sorts of scratches and the hole's not going to be in the right place. So I use a punch to get the thing started. If you don't have a special metal punch, you can use a nail. You know, be careful. I recommend before you start doing any of these things to get yourself a pair of safety glasses. I'm going to put these on now, just so you can say that I've warned you. Don't, don't pop your eye out. So I take a hammer and my punch, you know, I'm not super careful about putting it in any kind of vice or anything like that, but I suppose you could if you wanted to. Let's start the hole. Got my uh, punch here. And I'm actually going to... Okay. So there I have the hole started. Maybe you can see it better if I pull back. Uh, I'm going to take my drill. Okay, I got the uh, step drill sort of put into my chuck there. It's on. You see the hole that I have sort of started already. And then I just kind of... Now yeah, be careful, some of those things are going to be hot. So I've gone in there two steps. Two steps is uh, not quite all the way I want. One more step. And even one more actually for the five eights. So you can see right there that's a nice hole. It's already deburred. You don't have to worry about it. So I put the drill down and uh, we're going to work on the second hole, which is for the volume potentiometer. So sometimes I have this little handy table here. I can sort of get it set up so that it holds around object in the, uh, in the sort of gap in the middle there. So it makes it a little bit easier for me to tap in. You know, I don't have the thing flying everywhere. Like that. Okay. 
So there we go, I got the tap set. I'm going to lose this if I don't watch out. This is kind of hard, the hard part right here is getting this, this started. So you can see there I got the hole started. Grab the drill again. I don't need to drill quite so big a hole. So I'm going to again support it in the gap. There we go. So you can see the hole is drilled there, the hole is drilled there. And that's pretty good for the shell. So if you had a plastic shell like the McCormick Spice Bottle, you obviously would need to hammer quite so hard, but you'd want to start. Uh, you want to start a pilot hole, and I use. Uh, let me see if I can find it up in here. There it is. I use a little Japanese awl for that. It's really nice. I use this to start screw holes in wood too. So you can still you could use a nail or a needle or something like that. Uh, you still want to drill the holes out though, and I would still use a bit like this rather than a twist bit, even in plastic. It did just so much better with the result. Okay, so what's next? You have this, so sometimes I'll just drill this out, sometimes I'll take snips and snip it out. Uh, if I want, especially when I put wire mesh or something like this. This one says S. I think I might modify this, so I'll, let me set up a different tool, of Dremel, and I'll come back and show you how I do that. Okay, I was, uh, I was unpleased with this thing, so essentially I just drilled a couple more larger holes with a step drill, and I take my tin snips, and I'm just sort of cutting out a pattern, like this, sort of around it. And eventually what I'll do is I'll just use some mesh inside there, and it'll look better, much better than it would with an S on it, or how it was going to look with my sort of shoddy holes punched in there. This particular steel is harder than some of the other spice canisters. Aluminum is a lot much more soft, so it's a little bit easier to work with than this sort of stainless steel stuff that I got going on today. But anyway, you can see, essentially what I'll do is I'll just take the snips around, it doesn't take very long. I'll take it back to maybe a quarter inch from the edge and I'll sort of try and smooth out the edges with a bit, one of these deburring bits. And then uh, later on I'll put the, I'll put the uh, mesh from the inside and I'll show you that.